All right, good morning. Early Sunday school. It's early. I can tell it's early. All right. Uh, if you don't have a handout, there is one in the back. So <laughs> the one in the back row could just reach over and grab one. All right. So <laughs> anyway, there are handouts. I try to have handouts uh, this week. We do have a handout. And hopefully it will be helpful to you to uh, follow along. I would ask, it would help you if you could just be turning to the passages as we uh, kind of go through this. Uh, by the time I give you the reference, I'm going to be reading it. So if you could stay ahead, that would help so we can keep moving. So I'm going to talk about today uh, spending time with God. And we're going to be doing this for a few weeks. And uh, the first part of this is why should I have devotions? Why should I have devotions? So let's pray and we'll get into it. Father, we thank you for the time that you've given us. Thank you that we have your word. And what a privilege it is to be able to spend time with you and, and let you uh, work on our heart and, and teach us and guide us and that we can confide in you and talk to you about anything and everything that's in our heart and get help through this life. Lord, I don't know how folks uh, live without you, and I'm thankful, Lord, that we can, we can communicate with you and that you've given us this opportunity. So I, I pray, Lord, that you'd guide as we um, go through these lessons, and may, they, uh, may your word be a help and encouragement. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you've been in church for a while, which most of you have, uh, you've You've heard over and over that uh, you need to read your Bible and pray every day. Even the children sing a song about that, right? Read your Bible and pray every day. And so uh, it would be good if we're te teaching the children to do that, that we actually did that ourselves uh, uh, and, and got something out of it. And, and we often refer to this idea of uh, our time with God as having daily devotions. And just if you're ever wondering why do we call it daily devotions, uh, it's just what we do, right? Well, the word devotion is defined this way. It's a noun. Uh, devotion is the state of being dedicated, consecrated, or solemnly set apart for a particular purpose. Now, you think of that in terms of our devotion to God. We should be consecrated to him, dedicated to him, set apart to him, and spending time with him each day is a way that we can do that by praying and reading the Bible. Praying is us talking to God and reading the word of God is God speaking to us. And so having a time of devotions is a time to be consecrated, set apart. The second part of that definition is a solemn attention to the supreme being in worship, a yielding of the heart and affections to God. And that's what we need to do, yield our heart and our affections to God. And it's obviously really good to, to start every day with the Lord in, in consecrating our lives to him so we don't mess up the rest of the day. Uh, with reverence, faith, and piety in religious duties, particularly in prayer and meditation, devoutness. These are pretty good definitions of uh, that word devotion. So I think it's okay to call them daily devotions. Although, I think people say they have their daily devotions and there's a, a lack of devotion. There's a lack of dedicating their life and consecrating their life to God. We just say, well, I did my devotions. What do you mean you did your devotions? Well, I read a chapter and I, and I prayed real quickly and I rushed out the door because I'm starting my day now. You did your devotion, so you did what? Did you consecrate yourself to the Lord this morning? Did you take some time and, and really worship him and reverence him and try to have faith in him? You know, I, I get a kick out of I don't actually get a kick out. I mock it, as I'm going to do right now. Uh, these people talk about the, the one-minute um, Bible or the, the one-minute devotions. You can't be devoted in one minute. 
you, you grab a devotional book and you, and you can read it in one minute. Oh yeah, I, had my, I did my devotion. You didn't do anything. Uh, maybe you got your thoughts a little bit on the Lord, but you're not devoted to him because you did the one minute Bible or, or, or whatever it is. Um, so, this is part one. I actually have a part two, and I don't even know if we'll finish part one today. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but many people know that they should spend time with God and have never really been taught how to spend time with God. And, and I'm not saying that uh, everything that I'm, everything I'm going to teach, I, I'm trying to teach something comes from the Word of God, so I'm going to give you some, some thoughts, some practical thoughts of how to have your devotions. We're not going to get to that this week or next. But I am going to, I'm planning to get to that and, and, and be helpful with that. But we do a lot of times, we, we do a lot of preaching and teaching on, you know, you need to do this, you need to do this. But it's also helpful if we actually are taught how to do it. And so we'll talk for a few weeks, uh, uh, and, and that's not all there is to say about having devotions, but it, it'll be a good start at least. And if you're already having your devotions, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, uh, spending time with God. Is there a wrong way to spend time with God? <laughs> so I'm not going to say there's a wrong way. So if you do something a little differently than I do, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just going to give you some points and tips and some things that have helped me and have, that have helped others. And if you can glean from it, amen. Amen. And the, how I've had my devotions over the year has varied. It's okay. The, the, time, the, 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 the point is that you're spending time with God and, and your heart is in tune with him. Uh, so again, if you've already been having devotions, that's a wonderful thing, and I hope you'll pick up some things as we go along. And at least uh, this lesson and, and the next will, will encourage you to keep doing it, or if you've let up on it, or if it hasn't had the fervor that it ought to have, hopefully that'll uh, improve. Right? Sometimes we get a rut in a, in a lot of things that we do, and we don't want to get in a rut. Right? Just for example, right? you ever bow your head to, to pray at, for a meal, and then you wonder a few minutes later, did I pray yet? Y yeah, you went through the motions. Uh, <laughs> or if you're old like some others, that um, sometimes I just don't remember things <laughs> that, I've, that I've done. And I'm still young. Right? Relatively speaking, I am still young. Anyway, so before we give some step-by-step -step ideas about how to develop a devotional time, I, I want to, in this lesson and the next, just convince you uh, of how important it is to spend time with God. And I hope that these verses and these thoughts will, will stir your heart. Uh, in the meantime, if, if there's someone here saying, you know, I, I want a little... Uh, I want a little bit more about how I can have devotions. You, um, we have a devotional journal in the bookstore called My Time with God. It has a lot of little devotional helps in there. I would suggest you could pick that up and it would help you uh, to get a, 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 at least a start. All right, so why should I have devotions? Um, why? Why? Why should I? Well, because they always preach and teach on it. When I was a child, I, I, I'll be honest, I didn't have um, a huge desire to read the Bible. Um, but I also wasn't taught the importance of reading my Bible as a child either. So I think that may have had something to do with it. And after going my own way in life through my teenage years and all that, I realized I was messing a lot of things up. It actually wasn't until I was 20 where I got right with the Lord. Uh, but when I did, someone had pulled me aside and said that I needed to read my Bible every day. I didn't get much more instruction than that. Uh, actually, they told me, they said, Dave, there's three things you, you do. If you do these three things, it's like, a, it's like three legs that'll help you stand and give you stability. You need to read your Bible every day. You need to go to church every time the doors are open. And you need to go soul winning. Pretty good advice, actually. Uh, 
I've been trying to do those, and by the grace of God, I'm still standing. So we're going to talk about that first one is read the Bible. So again, they didn't tell me really how to have my devotions. They just told me to do it, so I figured I'd try. I had public school background. I did not read real well. I, maybe some of you have heard me talk about this in the past. I mean, I think by the time I was in eighth grade, I read one book. That's one book I can remember. I can actually remember the title of it, too. Uh, you say, how did you get through? Well, on the back of all those books, there's a little synopsis, and you just rewrite the synopsis, and that was your book report. That's how I got through. Um, that's what the book's about. That told me right there on the back. So now, can you imagine, I get right with God, I'm 20 years old, and someone says, read your Bible every day, and I open up the King James English and I'm like, I have no idea what's going on here. And I'm trying. And I'm, I, I was really, I just say, Lord, can you, I don't understand most of this. Could you, can you give me at least one thought? I'm going to read a chapter. Can you give me one thought out of this? This is how I was having my devotions. You say, well, that's not real brilliant. Well, that's what I knew to do. And I just... Begging God to give me one idea, one thought out of, of that. And you know, that's actually not a bad thing to do. When you get to your Bible reading, I hope this morning you said, Lord, could you give me something today? I need something. Otherwise, we just fall back on, I know what I'm doing. Let me just read, I've read this chapter. I know this is going to be happening. I already got this one underlined. And so, okay, yeah. And you're on your way. Uh, why not, Lord? I, I still need you. I, I need him as much, if not more, than I did 38 years ago when I started reading my Bible. I need the Lord, and so do you. So uh, God's word began to straighten out my thinking, and it began to straighten out my living. And that's why it's so important that we have a daily time in the word of God. It has power to do uh, more than you can possibly imagine. Uh, so whatever your problems are in life, <laughs> we've got the solution right here. We've got the solution, and God wants to help us with these things. So uh, so if you know it's something you should do, then you, know, you, you, you should uh, make sure you're doing it, right? So all of, all of life's problems, the answers are in the scriptures, and through reading the Bible and prayer that both go together, the Lord can change your life uh, in a tremendous way. And if you need it, you say, well, I don't need it, changes my life. Well, you probably need more than you think if you have that attitude. So I want to consider a few things that spending time with God will do that will help provide for your life. And as I said, as we go through the lesson, if you could um, try to stay ahead of me by turning to the next uh, portion of chapter that's listed there, great. If not, if you don't have a handout, you can just jot it down. So the first uh, things, why should you have devotions, the first thing that it'll do for us, it, 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 number one is it, it, it talks about salvation. So salvation, salvation. Uh, if someone wants to know how to uh, know about God, how to be saved, any of that, say, I don't know much about God. I don't know, I know there's a heaven, I know there's a hell, I don't know much about that. Where do I begin? Well, begin in the Bible, right? Uh, but really, a good place to begin would be the Gospel of John where it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ and coming for us. But if someone wants to know how to be saved, they should look in the Bible for answers. And you say, well, I'm already saved. Good. But a person can, uh, can only be born again into God's family by hearing the word of God. So you say, why are you explaining this? When my children were small, they weren't born again. I wanted them to be saved. So I knew where we we're gonna have family devotions, I was gonna teach the word of God, but I also wanted them to learn to be able to read the Bible for themselves and develop that, that habit, that pattern of getting in there. And so in the early age, when they were around five, when they were beginning to learn to read, uh, I gave them small passages of scripture that they could read. 
so that they can learn. And I directed what they were going to read. And I was kind of pointing them for different things in their life, showing them about sin and, you know, problems that they were having in their life, giving them the knowledge of sin and going through different parts of the gospel, talking about Jesus, who he was, what he did, and laying the foundation that sowing the seed in the word of, of the word of God into their hearts and lives so that at some point the seed would continue to get watered that they would come to an understanding of salvation. Uh, and the Bible says in 1 Peter 1 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Now he tells us what the seed is, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. So if someone's going to get saved, they need to have the word of God. The seed needs to be planted. And that's why when the children come in for Sunday school, we're teaching them the Bible. Amen? Yeah, they're going to hear some stories and have some fun and sing exciting songs and all those things. But we're teaching them the word of God, sowing that seed in their heart that it might germinate and take root. Then in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, Paul was speaking uh, to Timothy. He said, and that from a child... Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So those scriptures, um, Timothy was taught starting as a child. His mom and his grandma taught him the word of God. And then Paul came along and preached, and the word of God took root. And knowing the word of God enabled Timothy to put his faith in Jesus Christ. So God's word makes people wise to salvation. And, and again, why I'm giving you this point is, is because get people into the Bible, right? It, it, it's good to get people in the Bible. It's good to get your children in the Bible and so they can be trained and, and encouraged to read it. And it will lead toward their salvation. So why should we read our Bible? Well, first of all, salvation. And by the way, it's good for us to, when we read the Bible, be thankful for our salvation. So yeah, I'm thankful. Yeah, I'm thankful. Isn't it sad that we have to have a communion service to force us to think about what Jesus did for us? Anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> Number two, here's another reason, and that's growth. Growth. The second reason is growth. God commands us in 2 Timothy 3.18. He commands us to grow as a Christian. He says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're supposed to be growing. Uh, so if we refuse, think with me, if, you, if we refuse to take steps to grow as a Christian, we're disobedient. We should always be growing. I don't, I don't care how old you are. The oldest person in here needs to grow as a Christian. You shouldn't be the same person you were five years ago. Shouldn't even be the same person you were last year. Hopefully, by the grace of God, you have grown in, in, in your knowledge of the Lord, but not just that, in the grace of the Lord. Gaining more of God's grace, enabling you to have more victory over sin and to be used more to make an impact in other people's lives. And so we're told that getting into the word of God will help us to grow. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. And you know, a newborn baby, they'll just sit there and scream at their top of their lungs until they get fed. Ah, right? They want the milk. Give me, I'm hungry. Right? And that's how we should be in, in our hearts. Lord, I desire, I want the milk of the word to help me to grow. A lot of times we don't have that desire because we're filling up with all the junk food this world has to offer. And I'm not talking about the candy bars and tater chips. I'm talking about you know, the, the things of the world that, that attract us and, and we want to fill up on entertainment and, and, 
and all sorts of other things that aren't going to help our soul at all. So we need to desire the sincere milk. And uh, can you imagine a baby that doesn't grow? Just stays a baby and never grows. Uh, There'd be something pretty wrong with that. And uh, that child would never be able to serve a meaningful purpose in life, right? If it just has to be cared for all their life and wear diapers all their life and got to burp them every time they eat and (laughs) all of that. Uh, They can't protect themselves. They couldn't protect themselves. You understand when they're a baby that they're going to be vulnerable like that, but they're not supposed to stay that way. They're supposed to grow and get stronger and become more mature. And uh, many Christians are the same way. They, They don't grow, and because they don't grow as they should, they, they can't do much for others. They're not going to be very useful, not only to society, but to their families. In fact, then they have to rely on everybody else to take care of them spiritually. There are some Christians that they just have to be burped spiritually all the time. They have to be spoon-fed all the time. They won't take the steps to grow, to have the grace, to have the victory that they need to have. Uh, And then they can't defend themselves because they haven't grown. They can't defend themselves against the attacks of the devil. And so when we fail to grow, our life is doomed um, and we need to get stronger. So I, I would just challenge everyone in here, as strong as you think you are as a Christian, you have room to grow. I have room to grow. I'm thankful for God's grace. I'm thankful that he's still teaching me and that he's still helping me. I'm thankful that he's patient with me. And we need a time with God every day to grow. And if we neglect our time with God, we're not going to grow. And if we neglect our time with God, not only will we not grow, all those ramifications that I just mentioned, but we're disobedient and You know, if we've tasted that the Lord is good, then we should desire that sincere milk and and want some more. So that's number two, growth. Uh, Number three, cleansing. Cleansing. Another good uh, reason to spend time with God is because we can walk away feeling clean. Uh, How many here uh, like to get you know, real hot, sweaty, dirty. Then you take a break and it dries and you like to go back out and get hot and sweaty and dirty and then it dries again and it's crusty and you just feel really good and you begin to stink, right? You enjoy that? I mean, you might enjoy working hard and, and sweating fine, but then the, the, the stinky and crusty and all that stuff, I hope not. But after you take a shower, man, you feel like a million bucks, right? You feel so much better. It's like, ah, oh, you feel revived, you feel clean, you feel good. Uh, the same is true spiritually. I mean, we wander through this world. It's yuck. I mean, there's just garbage and filth out there. There's so many things against God. The language, the, the, the sights you see, it's just like everything is just like, man, It's such a blessing to get into church, isn't it? (laughs) It, And it should be such a blessing to get home where your home should be just a little haven from from that. Uh, But we need to be able to to be cleansed. And we, we get defiled by the world. We feel dirty, feel disgusting inside. And the word of God in John chapter 15, verse 3, can help all that. He Jesus said, now ye are clean, how? Through the word which I have spoken unto you. So God's word cleans us. As we read the word of God, it bathes our mind, it renews our mind. As I mentioned earlier, it straightens out our thinking. It it, it makes everything so much better and brighter. And, And the Bible and prayer 
they go together. You're reading the word of God. God convicts you. He shows you something. Then you confess that to God and you keep reading. And, these, and that's the whole idea of, 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 of having a time of devotions and spending time with God. You're reading, God's speaking, and you pause and you speak to him. And then you read some more. And it's not about racing through how many chapters you're going to read that day. I think it's good to read in the Bible, but it's also good to, to, to spend some time and meditate and, and think on what you're reading. But the, the, the Word washes our soul uh, like, you know, water washes our body. It's essential. And no Word, no cleansing. So when you just decide, I'm going to skip my devotions today, you're deciding, I feel like staying dirty. Yeah, you ever meet a clean freak? I mean, everything has to be clean. They'll take like 24 showers in a day. They wash their hands 192 times. Uh, and hand sanitizer, you know, 58 times in between. There are clean freaks. You know, it's okay to be a clean freak spiritually. It's okay to confess your sin. It's okay to get in the Word. You're struggling? Open up the Bible. Have a three-by-five card with a verse or two or three or four that... Uh, you're dealing with a problem with and you read it and say, okay, I needed that help. Thank you, Lord. It's okay to be a spiritual clean freak. We need God's word. Let me just throw this out to you also. Uh, devotions is not, if we're going to be devoted, please get it out of your mind that it's just a one time in the day thing. Spending time with God is something I should be able to do throughout the day. I need to be able to enter into God's presence any time during the day, not just check it off and say, well, I have my devotions this morning. I did my devotions. Well, I'm glad you spent time with them. That's a great way to start your day, but it's also good to be able to think about them and pray to them throughout the day. And after you've gone through a, a day, anybody here ever have a bad day? Anybody? Oh, yeah, we have bad days. Ever have a disappointing day, like you let yourself down, you let other people down? Yeah, I got both hands up, okay. Uh, you know what we ought to do? We ought to close our day with a time of being devoted to God as well. You know, now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You know, we get soiled, our soul gets tarnished as we go through this day. Uh, and by the end of the day, I like to and I've done this for a couple decades. Open up the scriptures and just read a little bit at night. I try to read a psalm or unless it's Psalm 19, I don't do the whole one, you know. But if it's a longer psalm, I break, break it down. I like to read uh, in the evening and then spend a little bit of time in prayer also. Why? Because I need it. I need it. We all need to have time with God. And spending time with God brings cleansing. And when you're clean, not only do you feel good, but uh, you'll look good. Meaning we'll, we'll represent the Lord much better. Amen? When we're clean, we'll be a good representative of Jesus, Jesus Christ. At home, in the workplace, wherever we are. So, cleansing. Number four. Number four is strength. Here's another one. Here's another uh, thing that having uh, a time with God, uh, time of God will do for us. It'll give us strength. So I think most of us realize this. We, sometimes we forget. But we have a very powerful adversary named Satan. He hates you. He hates your family. He hates the people that God wants you to influence. He wants you to be going sideways. He wants you to be off track. He wants you to be defiled. He hates you because he hates God, and you're one of God's children. So he's going to attack God through you. And he wants to get you defeated. He wants you to get discouraged. He wants you to get thinking that this doesn't work. Yeah, I tried that Bible thing. It just doesn't work. I've prayed about this thing, and it doesn't work. You know, it might work for someone else. It doesn't work for me. Well, that's a lie of the devil. Maybe have a little bit more faith, 
because what will work for one person in the Bible is going to work for another person. God's no respecter of persons. And so we need God's help. We are, we are powerless against the devil. You don't have the power. I don't have the power to fight the devil. And sometimes things get going pretty smoothly in our lives and everything's going okay and then we let up a little bit and, and then we forget. He, he hasn't gone. He's still plotting. He's still planning and we need to be on guard. And you and I uh, cannot do right uh, consistently without spending time with God, asking for strength and seeking it from his word. And that needs to be done every day. I need strength every day, and, and then I need to be in the word of God every day. So you make, uh, you know, sometimes we make decisions, well, I, I'm not going to do that bad thing again. Or we make a decision, I'm going to follow the Lord. Well, we're going to fail in those areas until we really faithfully uh, develop a time with God. And can I tell you this? Even when you do spend time with God, it's still a challenge to do what's right, isn't it? Sometimes you close your Bible and you walk away from your, your time with God and that's right, game is on and the devil's right there and, and just ready to pop your little spiritual bubble and you're like, I just thought I spent time with God and look how I acted or reacted. <laughs> uh, even when we do spend with time with God, it's still a challenge in a battle because we get this corrupt flesh that we take with us and then we get back, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. Please help. And I'll tell you, God's that quick to be there to help us. Amen? That quick. I'm so thankful. And he's willing to give us strength. I think sometimes that little scenario I described to you is because we, we're kind of just kind of cruising through our devotions without really trusting God. And then we go out and fall flat on our face. You can have devotions in the energy of your flesh, uh, but you're not, ha you're not devoted to God because you did a couple of things. And I think sometimes that's what we get into our mind. I did these things, that makes me spiritual. No, that heart of dependence is what makes us spiritual. So we need God's strength, and um, two things will give us strength, and it's uh, the Bible and prayer. So uh, the first point there in your handout underneath this is that the Bible gives strength to continue when we're tempted to quit. I know nobody else in here has ever been tempted to quit, right? Uh, Psalm 119 verse 28 says, my soul melteth for heaviness. So here the psalmist is saying, my soul melteth. You know, if something melts, there's not much left to it. It's gone. It's not standing. It's not strong. It's completely come apart. And sometimes we feel like we're completely coming apart. And that's the time we need to get into the Bible, and that's the time we need to get into prayer and say, Lord, I need help. And so here the psalmist says, My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Lord, I'm weak. I'm melting. I'm falling apart. Give me that strength. Give me that fortitude to be able to stand. And I can get that from your word. So he's seeking God. In prayer, he's seeking God's word, and God's word is bolstering him, strengthening him, and propping him up. And, and people say, Yeah, that Christianity thing, that's just a weak, that's just for weak people. Amen. I'm weak. I need strength to stand, and I'm gonna get that by the grace of God from my time with God. So the Bible gives strength to continue when we're tempted to quit. Secondly, waiting on God through prayer provides power. It gives us that power. It gives us that strength. We find that in Isaiah 40, verse 31, a familiar passage. It says, but they that wait on, upon the Lord shall renew what? Their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. I don't know about you, but if I see like a little chickadee, those little wings, dee -dee, I don't think of power. 
I see an eagle. I'm thinking, man, now that's, that's impressive, right? The, the national bird is not the chickadee, right? <laughs> we got the eagle, right? So uh, we, we think of power. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. That's a good verse for you guys entering the Fairhaven fun run here. Uh, they'll run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So God gives us. So we're waiting upon the Lord in prayer. We're seeking his word, and we can have strength. There's going to be a time where you're going to feel, I don't have the strength to go on. Get in the word. Get in prayer. But I don't feel like being in the word. That's all the more reason to be there. All the more. And, you know, if we continue, you know, when I got up yesterday, I ate. You know what I did this morning? I ate. And if you didn't eat, I'm sorry. I had an omelet. A little bit of bacon, a little bit of cheese. And it was good. Uh, and so I ate. I ate yesterday because I needed strength for yesterday. I ate this morning because I needed strength for today. I'm planning to eat tomorrow. I don't know what I'll eat, but I'm planning to eat something tomorrow because I'm going to need strength for tomorrow. And we need this continual strength from the Word of God. That's why I, I, I need to have a time with Him each day. And that's why I like to spend time with Him because I need that continual strength. There's going to come a time where you're going to feel weak and you need to get renewed. And you know, just that little bit of eating goes a long way. I remember my son when he was, I don't know, he may have been around 13, 14 or whatever. He came and said, Dad, I read my Bible every day and sometimes I just don't get a lot out of it. And I, you know, and I was like, you know, that happens, son. I said, but the important thing is to keep reading. You're, you're going to continue to get some of God's word. He's going to give you that strength that you're going to need. Don't give up and don't quit. Uh, I said, I likened it to, to food. <laughs> I said, there are some meals that I eat. I'm like, wow, that was a good meal. And there are other meals you just eat because you need to eat, right? We all have our favorites. And there, there are some that's like, mm, that's a good one. And then there's others like, yeah, well, and you ask, you know, what did you eat last Wednesday? I have no idea, you know, or what did you eat last su Sunday night after church? Well, you might know that one, but <laughs> if you had some fellowship or something. But, you know, we, we say, ah, I, but there are some that's like, oh, yeah, I had this, and it, it'll knock your socks off. Uh, it, was, it was that good. So, yeah, we need God's strength. Let me give you a number five, and so I think we'll get halfway through today. Number five, and this is um, in Luke chapter 11. We'll just take a little portion of there. But this is power over temptation. That's the, the point number five. Another thing that God's word will do for us, it'll give us power over temptation. Um, anybody here ever get tempted to do something wrong? Don't look all pious at me. Yes, you do. How often? Daily. So how often do you need God's strength to have power over t temptation? Daily. So in Luke chapter 11, verse number 4, the, the phrase I want to pull out here, the, the Lord told us to pray in this manner. He said, lead us not into what? Temptation. But What? deliver us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. We need power to overcome temptation every single day. And so when we decide, I don't need or I don't have time for my devotions, I don't have time to spend with God this morning, that's a decision to enter into temptation. Because we need to ask God to lead us not into that. 
and to deliver us from that. And Jesus gave some pretty good advice to his disciples that will also help us. He said in Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray. Why? That you enter not into what? into temptation. So when we don't watch and pray, we're not alert, we're not praying, we're not on guard, we will fall into temptation. You may have a desire to do what's right, but your flesh is weak. People come to church, they hear preaching and say, oh, I need to change this. They might even walk down the aisle and kneel and pray and say, okay, Lord, we got this, right? Help me with this. And then they get up and walk out, and that's the last time they prayed about it. You know what's going to happen? They're going to fall again. Why? Well, I prayed. <laughs> You've got to keep praying. Your flesh is still weak. I didn't finish that verse in Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I, I, I said I've been reading my Bible for, for many, many years now. And you know how much better my flesh is today than it was at 20 years old? It's no better. My flesh is still corrupt. My flesh is still weak. And I still need strength. And I still need God's help to have power over temptation. Your flesh will never, ever, ever get any better. Now, you can have victory, and God helps us to grow as Christians, and you can become stronger, but it's all based in what? Your time with God, your relationship with God. So if you can walk out of here with anything today, I just say, make sure that your devotional time, your time with God is a very important time. And it's not just a matter of, okay, you can read it, but then you gotta believe it, and then you gotta go live it. You gotta put it into practice, and when you fail, you gotta pause and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up, please help me. We're looking to God in dependence, and God likes to help dependent people. You know he's for the underdog. We know that, right? So prayer can help us, uh, prevent us from falling into these temptations. So if, if you fail to pray, you're eventually going to, to fall to some of these temptations. I mean, you could say, well, I didn't, I didn't have my devotions yesterday and I didn't fall. <laughs> uh, you will. It's coming. So... Uh, notice how David prayed in uh, Psalm 141, verses 8 and 9. He said, but mine eyes are unto thee, O God the Lord. So I'm looking to you. In thee is my trust. Now, wait a minute. This is the guy that killed Goliath. I mean, he's the king. Why does he need to trust God? I mean, he's got all power. He can tell people what to do, right? Why does he need, why does he need to look to God? Because he needs God, just like you and I need God. He said, leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. So they've set traps for me. They want to hurt me. They want to harm me. And we can ask God uh, to help us and to keep us out of the devil's traps. He has traps for us. Have you ever fallen into one of those traps? Not fun, is it? So how do you get out? You get out by spending time with God. And how do you prevent from getting in? Spend time with God. And God's word really will help us. So since I just lost half the class, <laughs> and because I uh, am at a good place, breaking point. We'll close with prayer. Father, we thank you that you've given us time uh, in your word and pray that you'd help us to have confidence in you, to, to renew our faith and our dedication to you. And I pray that as we look through the scriptures, that they'll stir our hearts 
and that they'll uh, cause us, Lord, to, to want more from you, to depend on you, and help us to remember that the, the problems in our lives and the failures in our life are, is not because your word doesn't work, it's because we don't work it. We don't follow it. We don't trust it. We don't believe it. And because we have a corrupt flesh and help us to remember that we need to continually renew our minds and we need to continually cleanse ourselves uh, through your word. And I pray that this would be, again, helpful, encouraging, that uh, we'd we'd work at our time with, with you each day. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.